Hello, Keith Rock here at VintageMachinery.org. Got a little uh, lathe project going to work on today, and I thought you guys might like to tag along and uh, see what's going on. So this is actually a uh, little project that I'm um, doing for a, a viewer. Uh, asked me if I could help him out on something, and it looked like a fun little project to do, and uh, agreed to do it. So what this is, is this is actually a, a collar that goes on a table saw that supports the blade. And uh, I've got a little drawing here that uh, I'll zoom you guys in on to take a look at to kind of give you an idea of uh, what we're going to be building. But this fits up on the table saw arbor, and again, the blade kind of presses up against it. Uh, and it, I think this one here is permanently, uh, it's kind of press fit onto that shaft, so it kind of stays in place. And it's also got, a, uh, I think, some set screws or maybe a... Uh, pin or something that kind of pins it in place. I'm not exactly sure, but uh, anyway, he drew me up a, a, a drawing here and this is what we're going to be making. Uh, I got a piece of uh, metal here in the lathe. It's just a piece of uh, mystery metal. Don't know what it is. It looks to me like it's probably a piece of hot rolled steel. It really doesn't matter for this particular project, I don't think, and uh, we talked about it. You know, we're going to try to make it out of that. So let's get over here and fire up the lathe and get to work. So I think we're ready to go here. Um, we're going to start out by just facing this off. Um, you know, this has been turned down a little bit down here. Uh, we're going to probably have to turn up a little bit deep farther up. This is just a little over three inches in diameter. We want to get to three inches and I think this is kind of where this is at here, but I'll probably turn past that to give me a good shoulder. There's just a little small area. I need to be three inches and then we'll start working on uh, carving out. Uh, the end down here. So let's fire up the lathe. Speed looks pretty good. Come here and touch off. And let it roll. that. I think what we'll do now is come down here and uh, touch off and turn this down to three inches. This part here has just already been turned down and actually it's going to be turned down more down on there so I'm not worried about that. Uh, but we do need to get it right on the money at three inches up here past that, so we'll just turn down a little ways and give uh, me plenty of material to work with and stop. That should be plenty right there. And you know what, I think I'm just going to go ahead and take about another ten thousandths and sneak up on that size. We'll get a measurement now and see where we're at. All right, I'm going to come in here with my micrometer. And we're nine thousandths over. So I'll go ahead and feed on in another nine thousandths and uh, get right on it. Check this measurement one more time. Still got one thousandth to go. 
to just fuzz that off. Target to work off of. And we'll go ahead and start turning that down. This has got to be turned down to a diameter of, let me check my measurement, two inches. So I got an inch to take off the diameter. Fifty thousands to go. I think I'll take forty and then take a final pass. off the back we got about uh, 35 thousandths to go on the depth there so let me just uh, come here touch off I'm just gonna face all the way down I should be able to get a good measurement on that. We're at 600, I got 25 to go, so I'm gonna take my dial indicator, I'm gonna put it down here on the carriage, we'll zero it out, and I can take a 25 thousandths uh, pass, and we should be right on the money. All right, that's 25 thousandths. Let me 
verify that measurement. So we got the general shape here. We got our small diameter, two inches, three inch diameter here. And um, as you can see on the drawing, um, it shows a radius on this outer edge of the flange. Uh, but he put a note up here. It says turned outside radius unnecessary. Quarter inch chamfer is okay. So we're just gonna put a 45 degree chamfer on here. So I've already got my compound on the lathe uh, where it's basically going at a 45 degree angle across here. And uh, we'll go ahead and chamfer that. And while I'm on here, I'll go ahead and put a little small chamfer on this end down here just to break that edge. I'm not trying to really put a big chamfer on it, but just not to break the edge. And uh, we'll chamfer in a quarter of an inch. So. Let's do it. So the goal here is to just come in enough to break that edge. And that's really all I want on that one. And down here, I need to put me a mark at a quarter of an inch. I'm just gonna kind of blacken that up a little bit. And again, using my shower for this kind of process. Mark in there. All right, that gives me a line to, to cut to. So, uh, there we go. We're just going to go ahead and uh, chant for that out. I think I'm just going to come in here and take some emery. I'm just going to polish this up. What we did is we parted this off, and guys, I apologize. I got through um, parting it and realized that I had forgotten to hit the button to record. So you missed out on the parting action, but uh, if you watch my channel, you've seen that before. We parted it off. Uh, I then put in my four jaw independent chuck here and we got this thing in here. I put some little brass uh, spacers back here behind the jaws just to uh, protect that, to keep it from marring up that surface because that is the finished surface. And uh, we got this thing dialed in, and you can see it's basically, uh, you know, there may be a couple of tenths of a thousandth of an inch in there run out, but plenty good for what we're doing. So we're ready to go now. Um, operations left to do on this on the lathe is I want to go ahead and uh, we want to, again, we, we cut this a little bit thick, and I can't remember if I said that in the part that got missing or not, but when we parted it off, we parted it off thick. Uh, just to make sure we have plenty of material. So I need to face this down to get it to the proper thickness, which I think is uh, 1.2 inches. Uh, I'll check my drawing to verify that here in a minute. Uh, once we get it to the proper thickness, we'll go ahead and drill a hole through there, bore that out to size, and that bore's got to be right on the money uh, because it will be a press fit up onto the shaft. And uh, he's giving me measurements for that. And uh, then machine a little recess in here uh, for the blade where it's only touching on the outer part. It's not touching in the center. Uh, so with that, we'll finish up on this side and be done with the lathe portion of this. The total thickness on this is 1.2 is what we're shooting for. And we're about 1.35. So we've got 150 thousandths to take off. Again, uh, I'm gonna put my dial indicator down here on the carriage and uh, that'll give me a good measurement to work off of. And we'll just whittle that away.
All right, we need an inch and eighth hole in this, so uh, we start by just putting a center in here. Just give me a little dimple in the very center to start on. And that's enough. Next, we're going to go to a uh, half inch drill bit. And uh, we'll drill all the way through. Next, we're going to go to a one inch drill bit and uh, slow my RPMs down uh, for this drill. to start boring this out now. I got my boring bar set up and um, anytime I'm using a boring bar I always want to try to get it as choked up as close to the holder as I can. The farther this thing sticks out the less stable it is so you know we've got a pretty much where it, it's just doing the depth there. You don't have much extra room in there. That's why you always want to try to do your boring bars. Uh, we drilled that out of the inch. Uh, I made just a real light cleanup pass in there just to test out my setup. You know, we're, we're probably about 10 or 15 thousandths over an inch right now. So uh, we're going to an uh, inch and eight, which is one inch, 125 thousandths. So we got a little over 100 thousandths to take out of this. Uh, probably just do it in light passes. I don't know, I'll probably do about a 40 thousandths uh, uh, total, 20 thousandths cut, 40 thousandths total. And uh, just work our way down to it. So. Put a little oil in there. Right, that's about a 20 thousandths or a cut, 40 thousandths total. We'll just make a few passes and make a measurement here in a minute. All right, we're going to stop here, take a measurement. All right, come back in here with my telescoping gauge again. I'm going to measure it first with the calipers. And we're about showing about six thousandths to go. Um, this is a fairly uh, important measurement, so I'm going to not rely on my calipers. I'm going to come in here with a micrometer now that I'm getting real close to it. And we're showing about 19 thousandths, uh, one inch, 119 thousandths, which gives me six thousandths to go. So I'm going to dial in six thousandths on my uh, Cross slide here and make one final pass. the money. So we're at one inch, 
125,000 right there. So the last lathe operation we got to do now is we just need to, to put a little recess around here. So on this flange, there's uh, about a 132nd of an inch um, just recessing the outside. So basically it's only pressing on the outer part of this. You're not getting any pressure in the center, which is very typical on a table saw flange. So uh, that needs to be a 32nd deep, two inches in diameter. So I'm gonna come in here and probably put a little witness mark on there to mark my two inches in diameter. And we'll come in with a tool and cut that out. I'm just gonna make a mark, get my calipers. That's about an inch and three quarters. So I need to come out 130 thousandths. So let's see, we'll try this again. thousandths of an inch that's close enough for what we're doing here again I'm gonna just touch off right there and using a dial indicator I'm gonna come in 30 thousandths which is about a 32nd of an inch again this isn't precision here. This is just uh, putting a little recess in there. And we'll turn that out. Right there. So here's the arbor flange. It's coming out real nice. There's the next step though, as I mentioned, is we got to drill a through hole through and then two little holes on one on each end that uh, I think a spanner wrench goes on. And to do that, I need to do it in the middle machine. I need to be able to position this thing. And I've got a C5 uh, collet block that I can use it on. Problem is, is that this is an inch and a quarter uh, bore and my biggest collet that I've got only take one inch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a little adapter, a little arbor that I can mount this thing on. This part of it will, will hold the, the this flange. The other side will be turned down to one inch and that way I can mount that in my uh, collet block and then we can go to the mill and do our drilling. So we're gonna go ahead right now and uh, turn this down to one inch, thread the end where I can put a bolt up on there to uh, tighten it up and uh, then we'll flip it around. Or actually this will be inch and the an eighth and the other side will be one inch uh, for the uh, collet block. So let's knock this little holding adapter out real quick. We'll go about two and a half inches on this side. All right, so we got that down to size and that's sliding right up. I put a little mark on there because uh, what we want to do is we're going to turn this down to one inch, thread it where I can put a bolt up on there and kind of just tighten that up onto the shaft. So uh, that's not a press fit, obviously, but it's where it'll just slide right up on there. But that diameter is to size. So we'll just go just a little past this line and turn that down to one inch and thread it. Should be ready to start threading. I got my machine set up on eight threads per inch. Uh, I'll make a scratch pass here and just make sure that we're good to go. Just let just a light pass going across here. We'll just cut all the way across. 
going to stop about right there. Pull out. And take my thread gauge now. I don't know if you can see the scratches in there. I can, and that is eight threads per inch. So we should be ready to go. A little oil on there. place where we can uh, work on the other side. About 40 thousandths to go. This is going to go up in a collet so it doesn't have to be dead on spot. I'll just go with the final, the pole 40. I'm over on the milling machine now and we've taken the arbor, the little custom arbor that we made and we have installed that into a square uh, collet block. This holds 5C collet and this is a square block. Um, it's up inside this now and then we got the actual arbor mounted on that custom shaft. And I've got to drill four holes in here and the four holes are 90 degrees apart. Uh, actually three holes, one to through hole and two on either side here. Uh, but by putting it in here, I can center everything up, get things lined up, drill my hole. I can then flip this thing around in my vise and uh, perfectly index that around to my four different places. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to get this mounted in the vise, make it flush with the back side there. Um, and yeah, hang on here. Right there, that's flush. Um. All right, we got our edge finder going here. I'm gonna just gonna come in here. We'll touch off. All right, that's the zero. I'll zero my DRO. I like to double check these, so I'll just go back in here and do it again. And yeah. We're good, so now uh, my DRO is zeroed. I'm gonna go up, we'll go to the back side and find the edge again. And you guys won't be able to see this, but I can look down over it. Right there. All right, so now to find uh, the center, uh, we're on our y-axis here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the half function on here, which is this button. I'm gonna select my y-axis. And what that did is that just divided 
that number that we had uh, in half. And now I can just uh, drive that to zero. Right, four tenths out right there. And we are directly on center. And I'm going to, but we're already zeroed, but I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, zero out my Y. And uh, that should put us right on zero. And then looking back at our part, I can just eyeball this and see, yeah, we're directly right over the center. So with that, uh, the next thing I need to do is we need to put it into the center of uh, this part here, which is a uh, 625 thousandths, which is uh, five eighths of an inch. Uh, we're gonna need to go right into the middle. So I'm gonna come up here and touch off on this face uh, with the edge finder. And then we can calculate over uh, to where we need to be from there. Right there. So this one here is a little bit trickier because uh, we're not uh, dividing a dimension in half. So we found the edge on this edge finder right here. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to get the center basically over this edge. So I know that this is a half inch. So again, just using my digital readout. Uh, in fact, let me show you what we're going to do. So again, I'm going to come in here, I'll zero out the X and uh, I'm going to just move it over 250 thousandths, which is half of a half of a half an inch, quarter of an inch. So right there, and I'm gonna zero that again. So now let me show you where we're at on the part. So instead of having the face on there, now the center is right over that edge. And that measurement is 625, that's 5 eighths. Uh, so basically half of 5 eighths is 5 sixteenths. So to move that over, we need to go the 312 and a half thousandths. So I'm just gonna, again, using my digital readout, and you guys can just trust me on this. Three, whoops, a little too far. Right there, three, one, two, five. And I'll lock my table down. Now right, we got a center drill in here and I'm just gonna spot me a little dimple there to start my hole on. Switch out, I'm gonna go to a uh, 3 16th inch drill bit and uh, this gets drilled all the way through the part. So we're at about a thousand RPM here. And take it all the way through. When you get down a hole like this, particularly a small diameter hole, you need to make sure you're clearing those chips out. There we go, we're all the way through. Good deal. Next thing we got here is the drawing calls for two 3 8 inch holes, uh, one on each side, but these do not go all the way through like the other one did. These are only gonna go about 3 8 of an inch deep, so I'm gonna pull this out and we'll just uh, roll it over 90 degrees and I'm just getting it flush back there on the front again. We should still be centered up in both directions and uh, we just need to go another hole here. So let me start off by putting my center drill back in. We're just gonna spot it again just like we did before, it just gives us a place to, that drill bit to start. Uh, drill bits sometimes don't like to start on their own. Uh, so use a spotting drill or a center drill or just something to give you a good, accurate place to go. And that's probably a little bit fast for that size bit. 
We're going to come down and I got to see you guys see what I'm talking about here. There's a scale right here and uh, there's a little piece here as you go down, you can read on the scale uh, how deep you're going. And I'm just going to be reading off of that and I'm going to go about three eighths of an inch deep. It's really not the depth isn't critical. Uh, we just these are basically just some p holes for some spanner pins to go into. So uh, we'll go ahead and drill that now. And that should be plenty deep enough. So we're going to flip this over again, do the other side. And again, that's plenty deep enough right there. And with that, our part is complete. Uh, about all I got left to do is a little bit of deburring on these holes, uh, clean it up real good, and we'll get it in the mail. So uh, let me get it pulled off that arbor and we'll be ready to go. All right. Got a through hole and two dimples. Again, I think that's for a spanner wrench. Got our front and faced off there. That part is complete. Like I said, a little deburring, and it'll be ready to go. So there you go, guys. That'll be a wrap. Uh, we'll get this part packaged up and sent off to our viewer who requested this to be done. Uh, fun little project. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Got to see some good action on the lathe as well as uh, the milling machine. So just a good all around machine shop project. Uh, had some uh, interesting features in here. Uh, so anyway, hope you enjoyed that. And uh, with that, like I said, we'll be through with this episode. Give us a thumbs up if you liked what you saw. Leave me some comments and uh, we'll talk to you guys later. Thanks.